uh, bull uh, gobbly gobbly.net, uh, which is my uh, kind of online moniker, uh, but I'm not very picky about uh, people using it. I don't mind people knowing who I am. Um, I uh, work for RSA. I've been uh, working in the security space for the last uh, four or five years, and uh, computers and technology and programming pretty much uh, my whole working life. So uh, going on 25 years now. Um, so this talk kind of came out of uh, a conversation we were having about programming tools uh, that don't get a lot of discussion and uh, uh, tend to kind of bewilder people who uh, uh, approach this from more of a hobbyist point of view. Um, and there's not a lot of good kind of basic information on them or intro uh, information uh, available to kind of get people started on the right track. Um, and regex was uh, uh, one of the items that was brought up as one of those tools that uh, people thought were uh, very valuable or at least could be valuable to them, um, but they never really got uh, the exposure they, they felt would uh, make them, them valuable. Uh, so this, this talk kind of arose out of that, um, and I felt that was a, a topic I would be able to, to tackle. Um, so uh, to start us off, kind of uh, what is uh, regex? And regex gets thrown out around a lot, but uh, it doesn't really tell you much about it. And it's short for regular expressions, which, again, doesn't really tell you much about what they're actually doing. And I have no idea where the name regular expressions came from. I'm sure uh, uh, some Google foo could reveal that for you. Um, but what they are uh, basically is pattern matching in strings. So for anyone, I'm, I'm hoping almost all of us have used a command line interface before, um, like Linux, uh, Unix, DOS, uh, some sort of a shell uh, interface. And we've used wildcard characters. So we've done, you know, like an ls space star, um, give us everything, or uh, an ls space a star, uh, you know, everything starting with a. Um, uh, what they call shell expansions, essentially. Um, that's basically the idea that regex is going to uh, start with um, and take much, much further. But it's that idea of, of using some sort of a character to represent a group of characters um, or, uh, you know, one character or a group of characters. Um, so basically a language used for pattern matching in strings. Um, so where did what, uh, regex come from? Um, we do want to talk a little bit about the history because it is long and it makes a difference when we start talking about the different flavors of regex uh, out there. So uh, keep in mind the theory of this predates um, computers, basically modern computers, uh, in, and jumps into like lex uh, lexical analysis in, in just regular text analysis. Um, but obviously these things lend themselves to, uh, to computers. So. As soon as you know, computers started becoming mainstream in the 50s, uh, or at least main, mainstream <coughs> in the, the portion of the industry uh, and, and uh, uh, academic uh, institutions, um, you started seeing regular expression or, or very similar types of uh, uh, text analysis tools. Um, so the first place we, we typically see this in modern usage is in Perl. Um, which is one of the, the very early uh, scripting languages that's still uh, in common use um, and uh, was fairly basic, but continued to be expanded on uh, by both Perl and other uh, entities um, and kind of branched out to quite a few different uh, software applications. So there are quite a few different variants of uh, regular expressions, and we call uh, those engines. Um, so they're basically different reg regular expression engines that uh, may support variations of syntax or different types of functionality. And I'll show you a little bit of that, and I'll show you kind of where you can find more information uh, about that. Um, and it's real important to keep in mind that uh, uh, each language generally kind of has its own flavor of regex. Um, so you want to become a little bit familiar with uh, the languages that you tend to uh, use. Some distinctions might be, uh, say, Java or Perl or JavaScript um, or Python. So literally, we're talking programming languages. Um, and then other tools that use regular expressions will typically support one of the engines that are used in the programming languages that underlie them. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, touch on that a little bit. Uh, more in, in a moment uh, when we actually start looking at some of those differences. Um, 
so the the last kind of general question uh, that motivates this is you know why why would we use uh, regex? And there are a couple of of really basic uh, answers to that. One is because they're fast. Um, so the regular expression engines are very well tuned for text searching, and they will do uh, little tricks and things um, that are pretty uh, ingenious in some areas. Um, so they generally are very fast at what they're doing. They're some of the fastest text searching implementations you'll find uh, that are at all abstract. Um, so they're, they're very fast and that's one of the benefits. Um, they're very powerful. You can do just about anything uh, as far as text manipulation uh, and searching using regular expression tools. Um, so there's a lot of power there. You're not limited to the, the uh, sort of things that you are, say, on a CLI using uh, uh, shell expansions. Um, they're portable. That's a big one. Um, so there are regex uh, engines in a lot of different uh, programming languages. Obviously, just about every modern programming language has either built-in support or uh, API library support for regular expressions. Uh, they're built into a lot of software out there. Um, if you've ever used uh, software that does filtering, like log analysis, anything like that, um, there's a very good chance regular expressions are supported on one level or another. Um, so they're portable, they're ubiquitous, they're kind of like Java that way. Um, if they can be used on a platform, you can find uh, support for them, uh, which is, is a big one when you get into uh, development and uh, you know how useful these, these tools are. And then lastly, they're fairly easy to write and test. I know a lot of people look at them, uh, they uh, look a little bit Greek, a little scary, um, but compared to learning a, a programming language, um, they're actually very easy. They're very easy to test. Um, you can test them right in a, a browser on many, many websites. Um, there are a lot of tools available for them. Um, you know, you don't need a computer science degree to really understand how they work. Um, so that's that's a big benefit. You know, obviously there is some complexity there. You can you can dig into a much much lower level, uh, and, and it can get kind of complex. Learning how to use them is, is fairly straightforward. Um, and then I, I mentioned uh, widely supported in software, which is basically the portability uh, that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, as an example, the, the text editor I, I use to write up my notes on this talk supports regular expression searching. Um, and just about every text editor that isn't made by Microsoft these days does. Um, one thing I want to bring up, uh, a common use case that I hear for regex, and let me uh, get the appropriate graphic up here. Oh, it goes a little bit off the page there. Let me uh, resize this. There we go. So we got our little Bobby Tables uh, uh, comic there. And uh, this is uh, one of the common areas I hear uh, regex mentioned, and since this is a, a security group, um, is in input validation for uh, injection uh, uh, avoidance, so like SQL injection type attacks, which is basically what this is talking about. I love this little uh, ad. It, it gets commonly used in any time anyone brings up the topic of injection attacks. Um, but uh, I want to point out that uh, this is fairly outdated these days. Uh, injection attacks are really an issue of mixing code and data. And as long as you're doing that, you will always be susceptible. You can do as much input validation as you want. There's a good chance at some point you're going to miss something. Someone's going to figure out a way around it. Um, it's a great tool to make sure everything's being done right. It's not the solution to injection attacks these days. Uh, the, the solution these days is to use tools that like to separate code and data, like uh, uh, parameterized uh, queries and SQL engines, uh, which every major uh, SQL vendor uh, or uh, database vendor these days will support. Um, things like that. So um, I do want to point out that uh, this is not the panacea for uh, dealing with injection attacks, but it is a good tool for input validation. So if you have a form you're asking for data from people and you want to make sure you don't get a bunch of garbage, this is a great tool to make sure you know someone entered an email address that's valid, uh, things like that. Um, as far as the security space goes, where I find myself using uh, these tools more often is in log analysis more than anything. Um, 
just to give you kind of an idea of, of where this is getting used. If you have a tool that does log analysis, there's a very good chance regex could uh, save you a lot of time and effort. So that's kind of the little bit of the history, a uh, little bit of uh, why we use it. Um, so we're going to jump right in from, uh, from here on out. And I'm going to show a couple of uh, tools here uh, that we use for regular expressions. And we're going to jump right into how to use the language. And kind of one of the big tools that we use within the security space right now is Splunk and Elasticsearch. Both use regex as part of their search queries. Yep. Um, SANO does. I was always helping David with uh, weird looking regexes that customers could never get to work right. Um, so, you know, just about any time you're doing log analysis, it's really handy. Anytime you need to format stuff, and I'll, I'll go a little bit more into details there uh, as I, as I kind of get into some, some actual examples. Um, and, and I think you'll start seeing different ways that you can use this. But that's one of the things I find is, you know, there's knowing the regex and there's being able to envision all the ways that you can use it. I'm going to kind of hint on a, a couple of those that took me a while to really realize. Um, but uh, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit is tools. And this is one of the areas I think that regex uh, is a good thing to learn because there are a lot of tools out there that can get you up and running very quickly when you're first starting out. So the first one I'm going to show you is Espresso. I've used this before, uh, but not in a while. Um, the reason is this is a, a desktop tool. So you download this, install it. It's there on your, your local app uh, uh, system. Um, and it gives a lot of functionality. Um, it allows you to do a lot of analysis of how regular expressions are running, um, which is great if you need to do that. But you know, I'm much more of a utilitarian person. Um, I just need them to do what they, you know, I just need to be able to craft something that does the job I need it to do. I don't need to get into analyzing how efficiently it might work or if there's a better way to do it that might run a fraction of a second quicker. Um, so I don't need all this functionality, but if you want it, these desktop tools are great. Espresso is one I've used before and it was uh, just fine and it does come fairly uh, highly recommended there uh, from Ultra Pico. Um, but what I tend to like to use here are these online uh, regex engines. And that's what I'm going to use for examples here. Uh, because they're quick and easy. You just go to the website. Uh, bam, you've got a place to punch in your expression, a place to put your text. Um, you'll kind of see how they do some highlighting and stuff. Um, but they also have uh, some, some references here, which are kind of handy. Uh, Reg uh, EXR uh, is one that I've used quite a bit. And... Uh, Regex Pals, another one that I like because uh, it's, it's fairly clean. Um, so these are great tools uh, to come in. And again, they kind of have some cheat sheets, um, you know, some examples here. So you can actually load up, you know, working stuff with, uh, uh, with test strings. Uh, so you can see how they work, see how different people do different things. You know, if you're a hacker, here's a great place to load up someone's, someone else's code, see how it works. Um, so that's some of the benefits of these. Um, some even have, you know, here's a, a direct link to the Perl documentation on regular expressions. So, you know, uh, the web pages give you a lot more uh, uh, potential resources. Uh, so this is another one, uh, Regex Planet. Um, this is one that's based on the Perl engine, which is why I have this up here. Uh, these two are based on JavaScript engines, although this one you can also do PCRE. Um, so, uh, and it, again, I'll talk about the engines a, a little bit more in a, a couple of minutes. But let's, uh, let's jump right in here. So I'm going to jump back. Uh, oh, they're not going to give us a test string either. So let's just grab a little bit of text here. And throw it in. Okay, so we're going to just do a real basic direct match. So um, just like any regular search, you can just do a string literal search. So let's say, you know, I've got the word apps here. So I'm just going to type in apps. And let's see. Hey, definitely found something. Let me get rid of my flags here. And we see here, shows one match. Um, you know, I can change this to be... TH, which is going to be obviously far more common. I get 10 matches. 
So you can just do a, a real basic, just straight, uh, literal uh, uh, character match. That's pretty boring. You know, just about anything will do that for you. Um, the the uh, interesting thing comes in here when we start to use meta characters. And for anyone who isn't familiar with the term meta, meta characters are just a character that has a special meaning. So instead of being, you know, a dollar sign, it means something else. Maybe it means this is where we start variables or something to that effect. In, in regex, a dollar sign actually means the end of a string. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the, the specific meta characters. Um, but that's meta characters are really where the, the regex becomes really interesting. Um, so uh, just starting out, um, we'll talk about it, a little bit about non-printable characters. So hopefully everyone's a little bit familiar with this, just in case you aren't. Um, we're going to uh, point out that uh, uh, there are a number of non-printable characters, like the new line character, uh, return character, uh, things like that. Um, and if you've ever uh, done programming in like Java, C, JavaScript, anything like that, they're basically going to use the same uh, sort of thing. So you can do a slash n is the new line, and you won't actually see it highlight it because there's nothing actually there to highlight. But you'll see how that actually works in, in a couple of moments. Um, but keep in mind that the slash C, or sorry, slash N is a new line character, just like it is in, you know, just about any uh, string representation. Um, slash T is a tab that is a printable character, but it's, it's not a direct uh, character that, that we can represent uh, as easily in a string. Um, and there are a couple others. Uh, I mentioned WAC R. Uh, there's WAC A, which is your bell. Um, if you're familiar with ASCII, you probably noticed there's an ASCII bell character. That's basically a, a slash A. These are all backslashes, by the way, uh, the escape character. Uh, backslash V is a vertical tab. There are a bunch of them. Uh, but do keep in mind, you can represent anything. So whether it's a printable character or not, you can represent it. Regex will understand uh, what that, that symbol means. Um, another thing to keep in mind, regular expressions are what we call greedy as opposed to uh, the term I always use is lazy, although there's other that can be a little ambiguous. But uh, what that basically means is that regex will try to match as much as it possibly can. Um, so if you have you know, something that says, I want to match something with, five, with uh, three to five zeros, it, it will always match five if it can. It's always going to match as many characters as it possibly can. You can control that behavior, but the default is to, uh, to match as, as many as it possibly can, uh, which is the, the idea of uh, uh, what we call greedy. Um, so I'm going to talk at this point a little bit about character classes, because this is where uh, regular expressions really start becoming uh, useful. And that's uh, starting out, we're going to talk about a bunch of just predefined uh, character classes here. So I'm actually going to sit down uh, and start out with a little bit of an example here. So I'm going to pull my text back in. And I switch to regex pal here because I think their uh, character class is on the side where we can see better. And. Okay, so to start out with, uh, we're going to look at the dot here. I'm just going to start going down the list here as far as our uh, predefined characters. So the dot is probably one of the neatest uh, character classes. The dot matches anything. Uh, so obviously a dot is just a single character. Um, so this single character matches any other possible character. It can be anything. You'll notice here it actually matched each individual character. That looks big, but that's actually just a tab. So it's still a single character, even though it looks like, you know, six or eight spaces. And then it, it literally matched every single character. Um, you know, we can match two characters just by adding another dot in there. So literally every time we put a dot, it'll match, you know, any character in here whatsoever. So the dot is, is really quite a special uh, character. We need to be real careful with it because it literally will match anything. So a uh, little hint, uh, and I'll, I'll touch back on this again uh, a little bit in a moment. Um, but try to avoid using the dot if you can. Um, if you want to go up to a point, 
try using the negation of what you're trying to go up to. Instead of saying, you know, do a dot and then this character I'm looking for, do the negative of the character you're looking for plus the character you're looking for. And the reason for that, and, and again, I'll, I'll kind of get into that and show an example, is because we're going to always try to match as much as we possibly can. So if our terminating condition appears multiple times, we may actually come up with a query that grabs a lot more than, than we kind of expected to. So, uh, and I'll, I'll show an example of that. You do want to be a little careful with the, the dot. Um, the next one are some of the more common uh, used uh, uh, predefined uh, character classes. And that's uh, character classes for a word, a digit, or a white space. So uh, notice that these are all escaped characters, which uh, basically all character classes are. And we can see, you know, a, uh, a double is a word character. So everything that is a word character, J-U-S-T-A-B-O-U-T, blah, 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 is selected. And everything it's not is not. Now notice I'm not defining a whole word with slash W. Every one of these is a character. These are called character classes. What I'm defining is a character that would make sense as a word. And that basically means it's a letter, a number, a hyphen, um, you know, something that we would expect to normally find in, you know, printed text. Um, so that's W. And if we wanted to get a whole word, we would need to ex extend that either by adding more W's. You know, there's two word characters, three word characters, four word, five. But notice, as soon as we say five word character, a word with four characters doesn't match it any longer. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. I'll show you in a moment how we can uh, kind of change that. Um, we can do the same thing, you know, again with digits. So I can come in here, put in, in oh, I want digits, not letters. Put in a bunch of digits, and then... And come in and say digit, two of them, three of them together. So again, I'm matching single digits, but anything that is a digit, zero through nine, is going to get matched by that. Uh, and then S white space. So you know all of our spaces are going to get uh, uh, marked in here. There are also uh, other types of spaces. Notice our tab. That's white space. It's not a space, but it's white space. So tabs get included in that. Um, there are actually some what, what we call non-blank uh, space characters. They're essentially spaces, but they are not. Uh, they're technically other characters, uh, which, depending upon the engine, uh, may be considered white space or not. You probably won't run into those, uh, but just to warn you, there are actually non-space, uh, non-tab space characters. Um, something really neat, you'll see this on the next line, is your uh, WD, not word, not digit, though they need to put not digit on there. So just about every one of these, you can negate by using the capital. So if slash lowercase s is white space, slash uppercase s is anything but white space. And we can actually see that. So now we notice, hey, we had all the spaces and tabs before. Now we have everything but the spaces and tabs. And in this piece of text, that's essentially the same as slash w. Um, it isn't in all cases, though, because there are non-word characters that are not white space. For instance, underscore, plus, my, well, minus is a hyphen, so that doesn't count. Um, but there are a bunch of, uh, of symbols that are technically not white space, but they're not word characters as well. Uh, brackets are another, another great one. Um, now, the, the question comes up, and I mentioned that, that, that I was going to talk about that in a moment. You know, this is great that we can select one, and this is great, you know, let me go back to W here, but I can select two. But what if I want to select all of them that are four and five letter words? You know, I, I can't necessarily do, you know, five of these up here and expect that it's going to match on a, a word with four characters. So there are a couple of ways that we can deal with that. Um, these are called uh, quantifiers. So um, there are about five quantifiers. I'll talk about each of them real briefly. Um, the first one you're probably familiar with, and that's the star. So the star just says zero or more of, of some value, uh, whatever preceded it uh, before. Um, you'll notice nothing actually, and, and this is a little weird because we would expect it to highlight a bunch of stuff here, but if you look at our matches, you'll notice it's infinite. 
Um, and the reason for that is because there's basically, and it's not actually infinite, but it's effectively infinite how many single zero or more word sections you can get out of this text. In fact, when you consider that it could be zero or more, um, you basically, it really is infinite. So you have an infinite number of zero length strings here. Um, so that actually confuses this engine a little bit. Uh, other engines would uh, would be able to handle this, but you'd, you'd literally get um, just the entire word. Um, so this is a little bit weird for this engine, um, but uh, I'll show you another example that's a better example of that, but it works just like it does in, in CLIs. It's basically, you know, any anything. Um, or zero, uh, which which is important to remember. Uh, another one that works just like the CLIs is a uh, question mark. Um, and again, you know, it's a little bit hard to, to see with just a slash W, but um, question mark means one or zero. So it could be a character or it could not be a character, but it will always be one. And that's essentially what it means in Linux uh, shell expansions as well. So those I'm, I'm hoping people are kind of familiar with. Um, there are some others. Um, this one I actually expect to work because it is not a complete, it won't match zero. That's really why we were getting infinite matches previously. Um, so a plus means one or more. So there has to be a something. There has to be a word character, but there could be more. So you'll notice this actually gets every word, because every word is one character or more. Um, so by saying this, we're saying, you know, everything that's a word character uh, uh, of one or more. So we're going to grab every single word in there. Um, this one's a really handy one, just to say I want one or more of whatever character. And I find myself using that probably more than any quantifier. Um, the plus is a great one. And then the, the last one uh, that I really like is you can just give it a numeric quantifier. So let's say that you wanted a three-letter word. You just say three in your W. And it's going to grab three word letters all together and only three word letters. Notice there's six of them. It's going to grab, you know, all six of those. Uh, but it, it grabs them in two sections, in three character sections. Um, you can... Define an upper and a lower bound. So here's all the groups. Does it not like my space? Yeah, it doesn't like my space. Uh, here's all the groups between three and five characters. So we get four character words. We break this long one into five characters and three characters. Uh, so here's our, our three to five character search. Now you'll notice, you know, we're, we're grabbing a little bit more than we actually meant to grab here. Um, we're breaking up on words, and that's actually what we told it to do. You know, we told it to grab the three or the five. So it's going to try to grab five <laughs> if it can. If it can't, it's going to try to grab three. Or actually, it's going to try to grab four, and then if it can't, it's going to try to grab three. Um, and that's not exactly what I mentioned we were looking for. We were just going to try to grab all the words. And so we actually can look down here a little bit, and we've got a, a, a character class here that indicates a word boundary. So what we can actually do here is put a B at the beginning. So now it will only happen when we start a word. So word boundary basically means something like a space to a, a normal word character or a normal word character to a punctuation symbol. You know, anything that would typically be a what we think of as a word boundary. So we put one on the beginning. Now you'll notice all of these all start at the beginning now. We don't grab, you know, two, two sections per. And then we can also define a word boundary at the end. And now we notice we don't grab, you know, the first five characters in language anymore. Now we only grab words that are between three and five characters exactly. So we've, we've quantified that further, and we developed it a little bit more by coming down and, and looking at another character class and adding it in there. Um, Another thing I really like about these online while I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, 
you can actually syntax highlight anything in your regular expressions and quickly get a, a brief description of what it's doing, which I really like about these online ones. I haven't seen this on any of the desktop ones. They generally make you like right click on it and, and look at, you know, some sort of doc or something. But all of these, you know, slash w matches any word character. Uh, quantifiers matches between three and five the preceding token. So this is really nice, especially if you get a regex, you want to edit it figure out how it works, you know, throw it in here. You can very quickly mouse over things, get little hint or, uh, hints on that. Um, so that's quantifiers. Um, coming down a little bit, uh, and I'm going to start speeding up here a little bit, um, so I'm hoping that this idea of character classes is starting to really solidify for people. Uh, I did mention earlier that the dollar sign signifies the end of a string, so yeah. Bring this back here. Let's say I just want the last. Word in the string. So take off the word boundary and add a. Period and bam, we get our last word in the string. So uh, that's our last. Now notice I did the the backslash period. That's actually a good time to, to point this out here. Now, I wanted to actually use a period. It's the last word in a, in a sentence. I expect to have some sort of a punctuation. Um, I knew it was a period, so I used it. But, you know, a period is any character. Now, oddly, because a period is any character, which also is a period, I can just use a period here. The challenge is, you know, this is going to work if I get rid of punctuation and put an A there it's still going to grab it. So I now don't know that I have the last word in my, my sentence there. Um, so we really don't want a period there. And I can actually turn that into a literal period just with a backslash. So for all of these special characters, the backslash is what makes them a special character. For all the characters that aren't special characters, um, or sorry, um, for all the char special characters that use a backslash, that backslash makes them a special character. For all the characters that don't, if you want the regular character, use the backslash. So it's almost the exact opposite, depending upon whether it, it naturally uses the backslash or not. Uh, so I just have a question on uh, how we heard so many times. So is, is a word anything that's not a white space? No. Um, so if you look here, and this, this kind of answers that, matches any word character, alpha, alphanumeric and underscore. Um, so it's basically just alphanumeric. A through Z, capital A through Z, zero through nine, underscore, and I believe hyphen is actually included in that. Um, I'm almost certain, in fact, here, let's double check this. Nope, hyphen isn't included. Now that may vary. My memory was that it was, but again, I, I oftentimes am using the Java engine. Um, I, I don't actually do a lot of JavaScript work. Um, so that may vary by engine. Um, as you work more with a particular engine, you get a little bit more used to kind of some of the quirks. Um, but yeah, it looks like for the JavaScript engine, it, it doesn't. It's just the alphanumeric and the underscore. So. Um, and in general, you'll find a lot of these things are somewhat consistent from engine to engine, but each will have their little quirks. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment when I kind of make it through here. But, you know, that's the start and end of a string. Um, I will point out that things like uh, slash B and uh, these guys. Um, these are what they call anchors, and they're also what they call a, a, a zero length assertions, which is kind of a complicated name for them. But basically what it means is they don't actually match a character. I mean, there is no character that means this is the beginning of a word, and there's no character that means this is the beginning of a string and the end of a string. So those are, are uh, non-character references, which is why they call them anchors. They, they define points within character structure. So again, for instance, a word boundary, backslash B, is literally the, the space between an alphanumeric character 
and some non-alphanumeric character like a bracket or, or a plus sign or something like, or a white space um, or something, you know, like that. Um, so these are, are defining points within a string, but not actual characters. They're, you can kind of think of them as sitting between characters or, you know, at the end or beginning before the characters or after the characters. But there is no actual character there that represents, you know, a word boundary or the end of a string. Um, <coughs> you know, you could argue that, that slash n, new line, signifies the end of a string. But in regex, we don't really have that. And, and the reason, this is probably not a bad time to talk about that, is because we actually have flags for whether we want multi-line queries or not. So by default, basically all regex engines assume that we are going to treat the string as if it's one big long string. Even if it has new lines in it, we're still going to treat it as if it's a, a big long string. Um, and then multi-line, we're actually going to treat each line of the string as if it's, you know, a string. Um, and so that, that gets a little bit into that. But as far as regex goes, you know, the, the end of a string is definitely not a new line by default. Um, so hopefully that kind of clarifies that a little bit. Um, just to kind of finish working through here, I did mention how you can escape any of these meta characters that don't that aren't character uh, uh, class definitions with the, the forward slash just by adding or sorry with the backslash just by adding another backslash. Uh, so backslash dot is literally the period. This is literally the asterisk. This is actually the backslash because if you use a if you want a backslash, it's going to end up escaping the next character. So you use double backslash, so you actually escape the backslash, and it becomes a literal backslash character. Um, if you're familiar, again, with strings in most programming languages, that's basically the same as what you've dealt with in, in programming languages before. Uh, I mentioned uh, slash t, slash n, slash r. These are non-printable characters, or at least that's what they call them. Uh, well, sorry, the, the line feed and return are what they call non-printable characters tab. Is, is printable. Um, I'll talk about grouping in just a moment. And I did talk about quantifiers here. So again, you know, asterisk means zero or more. Uh, plus means one or uh, more. Uh, question marks means uh, zero or one. We've got our uh, uh, explicit uh, quantifiers here. And I mentioned earlier that all of these are greedy. They will try to match as much as possible. Almost all of them can be followed by a question mark to make them uh, reluctant. Is I, I said lazy earlier. I was searching my mind for the right term. Reluctant is the opposite of greedy. Um, so you can basically make any uh, quantifier reluctant to grab as few matches as possible uh, by pre uh, following it with a question mark. So you can see here's two examples. Um, and I'll talk about the bar in a moment. Um, so I was really quickly before I get into a little bit more complicated examples. I wanted to show you this wiki page here. So this is pretty handy. Uh, Wikipedia.org wiki comparison of regular expression engines. So I mentioned earlier there are a bunch of different engines and it can be a little bit confusing what's going to be available for you. I know a lot of people who've started out struggle with this. So they're, they're looking at instructions for Perl regex and they're working a Java engine. They can't figure out why the instructions in their tutorial don't work. So this is, is great here. Um, it has some information about like what programming languages are using what uh, uh, engines, which is good uh, if you're not certain. Uh, a little bit of info. I think that's just more language stuff. What I really wanted to show you here is the languages features tables. So this actually tells you the different features and which regex engines do support them or not. So, you know, we talked about the plus quantifier. Again, one or, or more uh, of the, the preceding character. And you can see in here, you know, boost regex, uh, Haskell, Java, JavaScript, uh, Lua, uh, .NET, uh, PCRE, Perl, PHP, Python. These are all different engines. These all support uh, FREJ, which I never heard of before, doesn't. That may be why I haven't heard of it. You'll notice they almost all do. There's only one that doesn't. There are probably engines that aren't on this list, but I doubt anyone's ever going to care about them. 
Um, some of these I'm not really going to talk about. You're welcome to, to explore more. Um, I might end up doing like a 2 this is really a 101 style class. Um, I might end up doing a, a more advanced class where I talk a little bit more about uh, some of these other uh, things like nested character classes and uh, uh, character class uh, subtraction, things like that. Um, but you'll see, you know, fairly widely supported non-greedy quantifiers. You know, again, I talked about the question mark, make them the, the query reluctant. Um, you know, this is whether those are supported. Um, I'm not going to talk about shy groups or recursion. So some of these, and you'll notice most of the basic functionality of regular expressions is supported across the board. So some of these get a little bit more esoteric, a little bit beyond a beginner uh, discussion, especially with back references or pain. Um, but there's more pages down here, directives, conditionals, most of us know, you know, if, then, else style conditions. Regex, uh, some flavors support them. Um, it's interesting to see what you don't, like Java doesn't, but then again, you know, if you're in Java, why do you need conditionals in your, your uh, regex? Um, so anyways, this is a great resource to see what's going to be supported or maybe, you know, why you can't get something to work. Um, this look ahead and look behind. Um, I'm going to mention them, although I'm not going to go into detail because uh, especially look behind isn't supported by the online engines. Um, but these are ones that commonly people will want to use and the support varies. And, you know, it might not work in your engine. You might have to switch engines if you want to use specifically look behind, you'll notice, has uh, less support than look ahead. Um, but yeah, this is a great chart for that. So keep this in mind. Um, as, as you're kind of working on them and, and figuring out what your engine does support and why things aren't working for you. Um, so now I'm going to just spend most of the rest of the time just getting into a couple of much more complicated regexes and building them a little bit. So you can actually kind of see the process. Um, so that's the other area I've seen people really struggle is how do I get started? How do I, here's what I want to do. How do I actually start writing something and, and get it so it, it accomplishes my task? Uh, before we get into the uh, complicated expressions, um, has anyone used uh, like different like languages or character encodings with the regex? Yes. Like, how long does that work? I feel like I, it's been a while since I used regex. I feel like I tried using it before when I was searching my current documents. And I just <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and that one part of your question, I'm actually not sure on the answer on, and I've, I've wondered, and I just haven't had time to research that, and that is, how do some of these character classes get defined? So, let's say that you are, in, and I'm not familiar with Korean, but I'm, I'm not familiar with Chinese either, and that's what started me thinking on this, is, you know, I'm sure that there are, let's say that we look at a word boundary, um, you know, does not all languages have the same ideas of word boundaries in their written representation that we do, um, or things like that. And I'm not sure how regular expressions handle those situations. From a character set point of view, it's transparent in the sense that if you give a regex engine, you know, UTF-16, and that's what your pad that's what your pattern and that's what your string that you're searching in is. It's consistent because internal to the computer, you know, character code, you know, AF83 is the same as character code AF83, regardless, as long as your character set's the same. The issue gets into, you know when you're converting character sets. So if you're giving it one input in a specific character set and it's not another, and your engine doesn't have the ability to understand that, you know, you could be making totally weird assumptions about which characters are equivalent. Um, generally, it's not an issue because usually, like say in Java, you know, everything's uh, uh, basically Unicode, uh, basically UTF-8. Um, and so it's consistent across the board. Um, unless you do weird things to, to get a mismatch. I mean, you can force other character sets. But, um, and that's generally what you'll find. Um, but you raise a good question, and I'm really not sure on some of the meanings of these terms. And, you know, what would you consider a word character in one language versus in another? 
Um, but as far as the equivalence of characters, it's all, you know, as long as the character set's consistent, the regex engine will be able to handle that. So it, in a way, it doesn't actually care what the characters are. It's just the, that they're there. Um, you know, or, or that a character exists in a set. So the big question would be which characters are in the set of white space or you know these sets in that particular language. And I imagine that varies, but I don't know how it's supported. I wish I had a better answer on that part for you, but uh, it's a good question. Um, so, yeah. I don't have a whole lot more time. I actually uh, went a little bit slower than I expected, but that's okay. Uh, but I do have some some more complicated examples I did want to go through. One real quick note on vocabulary. Um, I, I throw this out a bit, but um, it, I know it can get confusing. Um, when we talk about regular expressions, the what most people refer to as a regular expression, so that's the part I've been uh, putting up here. It's where I put in, you know, the special meta characters, uh, slash W plus or whatnot. Um, that's called a pattern, regular expression pattern. Regex just re re really applies to this entire system. Um, but specifically, that's a pattern. Down here, what we're actually searching in, that's just a string. So when they say string, that's what you're in. And then the match text, hopefully, is pretty obvious. It's what ended up matching your pattern. So it's the portion of the text that, that actually formed a match. In, in our little editor here, it's what gets highlighted to show, you know, hey, here's where we, we found that thing that you were looking for. So I'm going to start with just a real basic one. This is probably similar to uh, what we already... No, I'm going to skip that. We already did that, basically. No, okay, I'm going to actually skip. Because that has one thing to it. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk about as far as getting into the more advanced stuff are these square brackets. And you'll notice here it has square brackets, any of A, B, or C, not A, B, or C. So square brackets are how you define your own class. So we talked about how whack W, all the word characters. Well, you can make your own class, just like we have these predefined classes. You do that by specifying what you want in these square brackets here. So what I have here is essentially saying all F characters. So I want both capital and lowercase. Regex is case sensitive, although you will notice up at the top here, I could change it to be not case sensitive, but it is case sensitive by default. So here I'm saying everything that either starts with a lowercase or a uppercase F. So again, we've got our word boundary, so that's what makes sure that we're starting with that. That is just one character, it's a class, so it's a set of characters that we could match. Uh, and then we're going to say any other word characters, at least one or more. So this will not grab, you know, just an F by itself. Um, it's got to be uh, with, with some other character. And then we have another word boundary. So that's the end of our word. You'll notice here it actually does grab all the words that start with F because we defined F and F. And we'll notice we can change that to a capital. Grabs it just as well. But if it's not an F, it's not going to grab it. So that's character classes, and you can put anything in here you would like. Um, one of the neat things is you don't necessarily need to escape it, so I can put a dot in there, and it won't match any, I'm not saying a character class that matches any character, I'm saying a character class that matches an F, an F, or a dot. So this would grab any word that started with a dot as well. Um, and the reason is because these are in character definitions, so it's not actually part of the regex. All I'm doing is defining which characters uh, I'm, I'm actually going to uh, match on there. And I can negate the whole thing by putting a caret at the beginning. So now we're grabbing every word that doesn't start with F. You'll notice for star nix, star is not a word character, but it is a word boundary. We know that because nix got selected, and we are only selecting things that start on a word boundary. So that tells you right there, asterisk is considered a word boundary. And basically anything that's not a alphanumeric underscore character is going to be considered a word boundary. So that's character classes. We're, you're going to see we use those quite a bit. They're very easy to negate. Um, one thing, let's say that you wanted to use a caret in your character class, that, that little uh, up arrow thing there, 
The key to that is don't put it at the beginning. So now notice we, we grab our Fs. We're not negating any longer, but we actually will work on Oh, I did too. I uh, kind of expected that to work. I'll have to figure out why it didn't. But, um, but that is correct. The, the way to do that is not to make it the first one uh, in the list. And obviously, if you just wanted the carrot in the list, you wouldn't actually need a character class. You could just put a, a backslash carrot right in your regex. Keep in mind, carrot is the beginning of a of a string. So if you want the normal carrot character, you've got to backslash it. And if you're outside of a character class, you could just do a backslash carrot. Uh, so that is the way you do that. I don't know what it is about this uh, online engine. The uh, w is alpha numeric <coughs> underscore only. So it's your, your slash w. Yeah, your, your backslash w is alpha numeric. Yeah, but that should be fine. Should be fine still. I still have a word boundary, a carrot, and oops, I might have to move it around, and two alpha numeric characters. I suspect there are a couple of little quirks that I've found before when working in the uh, uh, these tools. Um, I think that's one of them. I'm, I may have to do a little bit of testing on that and see. But most of these examples I, I did test ahead of time. Uh, adding that carrot, I didn't. That just kind of popped into my head right now. But, um, so let's look at one that's actually useful here. So you'll probably guess what this is by the tech match of the string I'm putting here. So here's some email addresses. Some are, are valid email addresses, some are not. And I'm going to show you just a real quick regex that I made, or actually I stole, to grab these email addresses. Now, it's not working, right? And I grabbed this last night out of a, a uh, online thing, and I'm thinking, how on earth can their tutorial not work? That's insane. It must be something on my end. And I stared at this for like 20 minutes until I noticed, hey, they have A through Z. Oh, something I forgot to mention. You can do ranges in character classes. So when I say A through Z, I mean everything in between. And literally, and this will tell you, it's going to be ASCII characters here. So ASCII code 65 to 90. That actually plays into a lot of character classes because most of them do ASCII at the beginning seven bits. But um, yeah, so A through Z is all uppercase characters. Zero through die is all the numbers. But one thing I've noticed after about 20 minutes of staring at this and my eyes beginning to bleed was I wasn't looking at lowercase characters. That's why this thing wasn't working. This thing I grabbed online, they didn't bother to match lowercase characters. So this would only actually work on email addresses that were all uppercase. And this was in an online tutorial. And I, you know, I'm not surprised so many people have trouble figuring out uh, regex from these online tutorials now. Because um, I just assumed it would work. And you know, it's one of those things where you stare at the wrong thing for 20 minutes before you realize it's wrong. Um, but you'll, you'll notice here, it actually does a decent job um, you know, it grabs uh, the things that are actually valid email addresses, but, you know, you can't use a bracket in an email address like that. Um, you know, this is obviously not an email. And it does things like it handles, you know, uh, subdomain, uh, subdomains and uh, sub, uh, I don't know what you call these when you sub out the username. But, um, but just to kind of give, give you an idea, you know, we're basically saying a word boundary. And then, you know, any, any letter, A through Z, A through Z, uppercase, any number, a dot, an underscore, a percent sign, a plus, and a minus. This is basically what's allowed in, in uh, email addresses. I didn't actually look up the RFC, but it, it looked right to me. And then we're going to take one or more of them. So again, this way we can say, you know, hey, we've got a dot in here, um, so we can account for that. Um, and, you know, we make sure we have all the correct items in there, and we're going to require an at symbol. So, again, if I mouse over this, it's 
uh, matches the literal symbol. And then we basically just do the same thing, but we can't have quite as many characters in our domain portion. So we accept a dot and a, and a hyphen, and uh, then we expect some sort of a, a TLD, which should be at least uh, a top-level domain, if you're not familiar with that, uh, which should be at least two characters. I've never seen a single character TLD before. Um, so that's basically uh, what, we're, what we're grabbing here. And again, I like this tool because it's very easy to look at this. And at first, you know, this is kind of gibberish. Um, it's not the worst regex I've seen by any means, but, you know, it takes a moment to figure it out. But it's really a lot easier if you can come in here and say, you know, what exactly is this doing? Oh, character set matches any of these characters. This matches one or more. Um, so there's one that's a little bit uh, more complicated. Pulled it off uh, from the, uh, the Internet. Um, but that wouldn't... Would that string there match like a .co.uk or something like that? It's so like if just at the end of .com just added dot. Oh, okay. Yep. Because again, I'm saying any number of these characters with the oh. dot, that's that plus means one or more, and then I'm saying at the end I'm going to have a dot and then another group that has at least two, but it could have any number of of normal characters. And notice I'm not letting symbols. TLDs don't use symbols. They're just straight up letters. So now again, I didn't double check RFCs. So in case someone knows more than I do about you know URL formats, I, I'm making an assumption there, but I don't think it's correct. Um, you know, so that's basically how this is working. Um, let's look at one uh, that we actually well, now let's do this. I'm going to show you another way to use these. So, and this is, well, this is going to be our last one. I'm actually over time, so I'll be here. So. Um, so I mentioned earlier that there are a couple of ways that you can use these that aren't very intuitive. You know, what I was kind of showing there in the editor is usually what you're doing with programming. So, you know, I sit down, I'm writing a, a Java program. I need to do some HTML parsing, and I know that what I'm looking for, I can write a little regex to grab it a lot quicker than, say, Apache's HTML library is going to parse an entire web page uh, and, and build the DOM and all of that. So, um, you know, that's that's one of the obvious ways. Input validation is another obvious one. Um, but, you know, there are some not so obvious ways to use this. So, um, I like this. This is actually a part of the LinkedIn uh, password file that got stolen. Uh, it had about 40 million uh, hash passwords stolen. So this is part of that. This is about 10 million lines of those uh, out of about 400 million lines, if I recall. Um, and notice, and I don't, I haven't really researched this much, but there's a bunch of them that they don't have. I don't know why we don't have these. Maybe they got purged. These user accounts were deleted. I, I don't know why LinkedIn has these uh, masked out. Um, but it has a bunch of these. Now, let's just say, for example, that I, I'm writing a little script to run this against a rainbow table. I want to find myself some uh, some passwords for LinkedIn. Um, but you know, my tool is going to expect just the password. It doesn't want all this other crap. Or maybe my tool is okay with having a user ID, but it's going to barf on my XXX, whatever tool I'm using to actually do the, the comparison. I was going to barf on the XXX. So, you know, we definitely, again, this is a 10 million line file. We're definitely not going to go in there and edit it ourselves. I could write a little program to do it. And we might be able to go out and find a tool that would kind of automate this. Um, but, you know, I know regex, and I know that my tool here has a find and replace function. So I can come in here to my find and replace, I can make sure regular expressions matched. I have some different options here. I'm going to leave them as they are. And I'm going to try to find lines that have digits, one or more digits, followed by a colon, followed by three x's. So now I have a succinct little query that will match Hopefully, every one of these lines, I can do a find next and see, okay, I match that line, match that line, match that line. Yeah, it's doing what I expect it to do. It's matching all the lines. 
and I just want to get rid of those. Now, I've done this before, and I've made a couple of mistakes, so I'll give you a little hint here that you might not, I didn't think about the first time I did this. If I remove these lines, I'm going to leave a blank line there. I actually want to remove one more character, the new line. So I want to bring my remaining lines up. So what I want to do is I want to essentially do this. Oops. Backspace. Just like that, for every line in here. So I write a quick little regex. I say one or more digits, followed by a colon, followed by an X three times, and then a new line. And I'm going to replace it with nothing. Now, this is about 10 million lines, 10 million and a quarter lines. So I'm going to hit replace all. It'll take it a moment. You know, it's a big file. It's, I think, about 170 meg. Um, so that's a decent sized text file. In fact, you know, I don't think this would actually load in, in Notepad, or if it would, it might take a good chunk of the day. Um, one of the reasons I like TextPad is it handles very large files. I can load a 40 gig text file, and it might take about five minutes to load, but you know, it's it caches and buffers well. So um, it's one of the reasons I like it. But it'll just take a couple of minutes, and then you'll see once this is done. Um, but it basically removed all those lines for me. Another place I find this handy, I don't know what you guys do, but I do a lot of analysis of logs and config, and um, I, I do a lot of looking at SQL. And I will uh, go to someone and say, hey, here's a query, I need you to, to run this and send me the output. And I get a SQL plus back that is the most malformed piece of crap known to man. And it is completely unuseful. And if anyone out there has done large data sets in uh, SQL Plus without setting uh, like your spool size and your, your column lengths and stuff like that, it's a mess. Um, I once, actually, before I had the idea to use this, I wrote a Java program to uh, fix that for me. And it took me about eight hours to, to get it all right and get it so it would do you know any arbitrary SQL Plus output that I gave it. Um, but since uh, realizing how easy it is to do find and replaces in, in these, um, I can now do it with about three different regex replaces. So that's, that's one thing I have found is you can't always get a single query that's going to do a find and replace to fit your need. Sometimes it's two or three. You run one, run another. Um, and then things are formatted how you want them. I can do this now in regex and text edit for those... Uh, those in about 10 to 15 seconds. I can have them reformatted. Um, if they're really big files like this, you know, maybe I'll, it'll take me 10 to 15 seconds. I'll hit replace all, and then I'll go grab a cup of coffee. And, you know, two minutes later, it's done. Um, well, that's really handy. You know, there are a bunch of little problems like that. Like, let's say you wanted to go through a text file and convert all of the multiple tabs down to eight single spaces. Um, or let me, let me put this better. You wanted to convert all the tabs to eight single spaces and remove the redundant tabs. So, um, you know, that would be very difficult. There is a way to do that in a normal search where you don't have regex. You basically search for two tabs and replace them with one. And then you keep doing that until it doesn't find anything anymore. And then you convert all your tabs to, to eight spaces. Regex, I can do it in a single command. I can say whack T plus replace it with eight spaces. Now it doesn't matter how many tabs I have. It'll always become eight spaces. One pass, I don't have to sit there and keep doing it. You know, again, there are tools out there that will help you do these things, but you know, they're not quick and dirty. If you just need to do one thing really quickly and the next time you run into it, it's going to be very different format. You know, this is a tool that can very quickly get you there. And it's done. You know, it took probably three minutes, maybe. And again, you know, I'll show you this. Now we did remove some lines, so it's a little bit smaller now. So it's now 7,153,000. Started at right around 10 million and a quarter. So in that time, I just trimmed out, you know, 3 million lines. Um, in a way that generally a, a normal search replace functionality isn't going to let you do. Um, with no specialized tools, you know, Ultra Edit, Notepad Plus, there are a ton of tools that support this, just about any non Windows editor. Um, yeah.
I'm almost 15 minutes over, so I have plenty more I could talk about, but I'm not going to. If you have questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, let me jump back here and get you my name and my email address. Feel free to email me. I'm fairly responsive. Um, if people are interested, I don't mind doing a, a more advanced class where we can kind of continue going into more of this, talk about back referencing, um, look ahead, look behind, things like that. But hopefully this gets people enough to get up and going, uh, work through any issues you might run into, and get you familiar a little bit with the tools to kind of progress on. Um, so yeah. Um, another thing, if anyone wants to talk about uh, SQL injection protection and better ways to do it than just basic input validation, definitely uh, hit me up. I love that topic. Um, and yeah, thanks for uh, listening to my talk.